I've been using both the iPhone 14 Pro Max and Samsung's Galaxy Z Fold 4. And today in this video, I wanted to give you some insight on whether you should consider either one of these phones. Or if you're choosing between the two, which phone is the best fit for you? So sit back and get ready because we're gonna be doing quite the deep dive on these phones. As you all know, I've been a huge advocate for when it comes to folding phones. The Z Fold 4 has really changed the way I think about and use my phone. I feel like I'm able to get the most out of it when it comes to productivity and the larger display makes it amazing for playing games and watching videos. Though the Fold isn't for everybody and today I'm going to be taking off my tinfoil hat and giving you an unbiased look at both of these devices. So before we get started, a like and a sub to the channel would go a really long way and maybe even consider hitting that notification bell because it really does help me out a ton. Both of these phones are the talk of the town, Apple's latest and greatest iPhone iPhone 14 Pro Max and Samsung's most expensive phone, the Galaxy Z Fold 4. There is obviously a huge difference between these two phones, but I think if there's any device to make someone consider jumping ship to Android, the Fold 4 has got to be the most unique phone with very little competition. The 14 Pro Max starts at a whopping $1,099. The Z Fold 4, on the other hand, is nearly double that at $1,800. However, if you want to match the Z Fold 4 storage on the iPhone, you're going to have to up that base configuration of 128GB all the way to 256 which is an extra $100 closing that gap just ever so slightly. This is an upgrade that I would recommend as apps and games are starting to get larger and with the ability to shoot Pro Raw on the iPhone, that extra storage helps out a ton, especially if you want to shoot in 4K, but we'll get into that. When it comes to the value proposition though, it's not as cut and dry. You're getting a lot more with the Fold, like the larger inner display, five cameras, the ability to use the S Pen, and much more versatility in how you can operate and manipulate this phone, like Split View for example. With the iPhone, it's pretty much what you see is what you get, though don't let that deter you. When it comes to hardware and materials of these devices, both feel really premium, but the iPhone is in a league of its own. Stainless steel edges, ceramic shield glass, and large sapphire glass covering the camera's lenses. It also has a really solid heft to it, making it feel significantly more premium than some of the other smartphone choices out there. That being said, if you've used an iPhone 12 and beyond, it's gonna feel like you're using the exact same phone with just a few minor tweaks. The Fold is not as impressive, but it's definitely more polished over the previous Fold 3. You get flat polished aluminum edges and a less premium looking but more robust camera layout with the housing being surrounded by aluminum versus glass. It also has Gorilla Glass Victus on the cover display, which is nice, but for both of these phones, I would always recommend using a screen protector. Where things start to take a turn for the Fold, however, is in the internal display. To get this OLED to fold over itself, it uses a really thin glass-like material, which is more akin to and is treated like plastic. Although I'm very comfortable using the Fold in my use case, I would kind of steer away from this phone if you're working a labor-intensive job because the last thing that you want to do is damage the really weak display on this phone rendering it completely useless because that repair cost is through the roof if you don't have Samsung care. However, the Fold is technically rated up to 150 folds a day for five years. I just don't really know how much I trust that number because on Reddit, there are some people already experiencing the display cracking. Though those are probably in the severe minority, this is still kind of a concern, at least at this early stage in foldables. The screen being plastic also makes it much harder to clean, showing oils and smears much more easily, as well as the fact that it really likes to attract a lint. I promise you, you'll be cleaning this phone almost every time you take it out of your pocket. Though what you lose in durability on the Fold, you gain in productivity. With the iPhone, it's pretty much your typical smartphone. Run one app and maybe have a call or music in the background. This is something that we've been used to for years and for most people, this is what they're looking for. Though if you're someone that wants to get more out of your phone or maybe replace your tablet with a device that can do everything, this is where the Fold shines. You have a dock at the bottom of the screen that you can show or hide. 
it mimics the bottom row of your apps in your home screen, and it can also show you recent apps to bounce between easily. Utilizing this doesn't mean that you can just run two apps or three apps, but you can comfortably use four applications and technically eight at the same time if you wanted to. It does get a little cramped the more you fill up the screen, but I'm sure a lot of people can find this usable in a lot of ways. For me, I use it for writing scripts and checking my spec sheets at the same time, which does improve my workflow immensely. And on the iPhone, if I wanted to do that, I would have to switch between Google Docs and Chrome, which makes it feel a little more limiting. To me at least. You also have the ability to use the S Pen on the Fold, so if you're into art or want to use it as a notepad or to sign e-signatures, you can, which is something that you can't do with the iPhone at all. Though this is what makes the iPhone more accessible to most people, and in most cases, you don't need to or may not want to run two different apps at the same time. So having a large 6.7 inch retina display to focus on one task at a time gives you a great amount of real estate and it's very comfortable to use. When it comes to biometrics, the iPhone uses Face ID and the Fold has a built-in fingerprint scanner inside of the power slash lock button. It's kind of hard to say which one I actually prefer, so this is something that would be down to your preference. However, I do like having the fingerprint sensor. When I unfold the phone and unlock it, it's already open. I don't have to awkwardly look at my device to make sure it unlocks, or if I'm laying in bed, I don't have to do that awkward head tilt to get the phone to recognize me. Though both are very fast, and technically Face ID is a little more secure. So really at the end of the day, it comes down to which one you prefer. The battery though is a little bit of a different story and this is something that I would consider to be very one-sided depending on how much you actually use your phone. On the Fold, I get at most about seven to seven and a half hours. Now that's not bad and it's far more than I need on both of these devices, but it's something to keep in mind if you really need to rely on the longevity of your battery. That being said though, the Fold is pushing a larger display and it does also have an extra 5 watt advantage when it comes to charging speed, so if you're sticking to the cover display on a long day, you'll probably be fine. The cover display is also a huge point of contention for most people, but I have a take on it that you may either agree with wholeheartedly or just completely disagree and call me stupid. The cover display is the perfect size. It doesn't need to be bigger or wider or shorter, it just makes sense. It's a 6.2 inch narrow display, which may feel a little less comfortable than the 14 Pro Max, but if you're someone with smaller hands, you may actually like it better. Because the Fold is a thicker phone when it's folded, having a more narrow display allows for much more reachability. Despite both the iPhone and the Fold being nearly as tall as each other, I'm able to actually work around the cover display on the Fold much more easily with one hand. Whether it's reaching the control panel, or sending a text on the iPhone, I have to do this awkward reach around where I shift the weight of the phone in my hand, making it more prone to being dropped. With the Fold, I can do this while having a tight grip, even with a case, which makes me just feel even more comfortable with the phone while I'm out walking around when I only have one hand to use. When it comes to two-handed typing, it's still very comfortable, for me at least, it did take a little bit of some getting used to coming from larger phones like the S22 Ultra, but it's really not that big of a deal and once you get adjusted to it, it's honestly a very pleasing experience. And that's something that I can't say about the Fold 3, even though the display is just a little bit wider, and I'm talking millimeters, it makes all the difference with the Fold 4. Obviously when it comes to iPhones, it's going to be a very comfortable two-handed typing experience regardless. It's very familiar and akin to pretty much any recent smartphone that you've used regardless of who made it. But let's switch it up for a second and talk about the cameras. The Fold is weird because it has a camera on the front cover display, a main 50 megapixel shooter which bends down to 12 megapixels by default, a 3x telephoto, and an ultra wide, as well as an inner display selfie camera on the large display inside of the phone. The one inside of the cover display sits behind a really tight pixel group which makes it almost invisible in your day to day, however I would consider it to be very unusable. It gets the job done, like whether you're doing video calls and whatnot, but if you want to take selfies, don't even consider this being an option. For that, you can use the 10 megapixel camera on the cover display or use flex mode and shoot up to 50 megapixels with the main camera. You can also do that, 
and have the viewfinder thanks to the nature of this phone being foldable. On the iPhone, you get an autofocusing front facing camera, a primary 48 megapixel sensor, as well as an ultra wide and a telephoto lens. Both of these phones are solid when it comes to taking photos, whether that's sharpness, colors, everything about them is what I would expect from a flagship phone. However, with the iPhone, if you really want to utilize that camera and see that sharpness for yourself, you're going to want to shoot in RAW. I felt that the point and shoot aspect of the 14 Pro Max to be honestly very underwhelming. A lot of times images came out a little bit blurry, the HDR wasn't really that great, and when it came to sharpness, because they're using a binned photo with that point and shoot sensor, it just didn't really... It just didn't do it for me. I actually have done a few blind tests of both of these phones on Twitter compared to each other. And in most cases, I, I know this is gonna sound ridiculous, but most people actually preferred the Folds images over the iPhone. I thought that was surprising, but at the end of the day, it really comes down to the stylistic approach of Samsung where the photos look more shareable out of camera. And the iPhone has more muted colors which gives you more freedom to tweak it as you please. Honestly, I will say though that I'm really shocked by the Fold's camera performance. I'm not entirely sure why this phone got such a bad rep when it comes to photos. I think that may have been because the Fold 3 wasn't really that great, but if I'm being real here, depending on whichever phone you choose, both of them are gonna give you great photos. However, for video, it's a completely different story. And without diving in too much, because there's a lot to talk about with the iPhone, it's a reliable, good looking, steady and sharp camera for video, regardless of whether you're using the front facing camera or the ones on the back. If you're into any content creation or shoot small film projects for fun, the iPhone's video capabilities are kind of insane. The low light capabilities on the iPhone are also much more of an improvement improvement, retaining way more detail in darker environments, and I think if I had to pick a camera based on versatility, it would be the iPhone. Though when it comes to the Fold, having flex mode is like always having a tripod in your pocket. It's great for videos to set up a shot or just to take a selfie by waving your hand while using that 50 megapixel sensor on the back of the phone. But let's be realistic here because there's one huge elephant in the room. One of these phones is running Android and one of these phones is running iOS. So if you're looking for a phone that's an iPhone that runs iOS, you're probably not gonna be leaning toward the phone. And if you like Android, you're probably not gonna be picking up an iPhone anytime soon. Like if you spent thousands invested into the Apple ecosystem, you're probably not gonna switch to a Samsung phone and vice versa. That being said, from my own first-hand experience, making the switch from the iPhone 13 Pro Max to the S22 Ultra has been one of the best decisions that I've made. It's opened me up to so many great devices and it's allowed me to choose a phone based on what I'm looking for rather than what I feel locked into. I thought that getting away from iMessage was gonna be a nightmare and leaving FaceTime behind was just gonna kill me. And I also thought that just having less feature parity with my Mac was gonna be really annoying. But after I had used the S22 Ultra for just a week, I realized that it would be really hard for me to switch back to an iPhone. Like in all seriousness, if it wasn't for this channel, I wouldn't have considered picking up the iPhone 14 Pro Max. And that's just the cold hard truth. There isn't anything wrong with iOS, but for me personally, I just feel like it's a lot more limiting to what I can do on an Android phone. Like let's be realistic here iOS is probably one of the most reliable operating systems, and for most people, that's a really big deal. But I can't say that I've had any reliability issues on any of the Samsung phones that I've used. And when it comes to the Z Fold 4, I honestly have had less problems with this phone's software than I have with the iPhone. And when it comes to speed, both of them are using really high-end chips, the A16 Bionic and the 8 Plus Gen 1 on the Fold. And realistically, when it comes to opening apps or playing games, both of them are gonna give you a really similar performance. Yes, on paper, the A16 Bionic is faster, but if you watch any sort of real world comparisons or any of these synthetic tests opening a bunch of apps and playing a bunch of games, both phones are neck and neck and either one of them can lead out in front of each other depending on the applications. That being said, choose as you wish. I let my bias poke a little bit through near the end of the video, but I just can't help it. That also doesn't change my opinion in the slightest when I say both of these phones are a really good choice and I wouldn't lead anyone down the wrong path when 
paying an exorbitant amount of money for these devices. Can I just say though, that I'm also glad that I spent an entire video without talking about the dynamic island on the iPhone. <laughs> Anyways, I'll see you all in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, consider leaving a like on the video as well, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.